Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of Dirty Money and we're going to be talking about SVB Silicon Valley Bank asking the question is it going to be the next Lehman Brothers and in the studio today I have Mike how you doing Mike doing great minus the fact that the uh, whole stock market's uh, shaken up today about uh, a bank basically being shut down within a week but otherwise I'm doing pretty good (laughs) <laughs> so let's let's give the viewers um a little bit of an idea of sort of the timeline of what happened because i know svb well uh it's a silicon valley bank they lend to a lot of silicon valley startups etc uh, a lot of you know startups have accounts with them venture capital companies and their stock it was 267 dollars on wednesday and it's dropped to around 100 dollars now do you, do you want to talk about exactly I, like i mean the stock was 320 dollars last week and, and- wow so the, the feds uh, come in today in the morning, the stock drops overnight. It opens up at around $60 a share. It, they literally haul trading at $39.50. The stock dropped from Wednesday to today, 86%. You're talking about a complete collapse of a bank. And when I talk about it's in the top, the top mm-hmm. banks in the country, I mean, they have a $211 billion in assets. The big thing, there's just so much there that, you know, makes you go, is it idiosyncratic or is it systemic? You know, what's going to happen next with uh, with this whole thing? I wanted to reach out to some of the guys I know that run hedge funds, but I was like, I'm not going to do this and ask them if they had exposure because if they did, their heads were straight. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, yes. that, that, yeah. that's something I was going to do earlier. And I was like, mm, better better not I'll wait till Saturday or Sunday to, just to see if they had exposure there. But. Yeah, it's it's pretty intense because it's it's a little tricky on how it happened, right? So it's not like right. where we had Lehman, who's holding a tremendous amount of debt and holding a little bit of assets where it's almost even. Like, oh, wait, Lehman had $619 billion in assets, I think, or $639 billion in assets Lehman had. And they had $613 billion in debt, right? So... So they're running pretty close to an even balance sheet when they're when they're clearing out their banks at the end of the night. Problem with Lehman was is no one would buy their paper at the end of the night, and all their paper were holding was was the uh, mortgages that were basically bad. So this is a little bit different, even though there was some exposure on a lot of different stuff. Yeah. So let's <clears throat> let's give a little recap or uh, a little synopsis on how this happened, uh, so people can understand. So. Basically, the basics of it is that um, Silicon Valley Bank and a lot of banks, they invest heavily in treasuries, right? Because they need to put, you know, customers deposit money in the bank. They often buy treasuries with it. And this bank bought a lot of treasury bills over the past year or so at quite low interest rates, much lower than uh, is common now because the Fed has raised rates so fast. Um, But because the the Fed raise rates fast, uh, banks have had to increase the interest they pay out on uh, bank accounts. And also many of the customers uh, have had to withdraw money from the bank because their interest has gone up on other loans. So they need more money uh, to pay that interest um, and just more money in general because of inflation and you know the general financial situation. So they're faced with a lot of withdrawals. And <clears throat> thus, they needed to sell some of their assets, some of the, the bonds that they bought, the treasury bills, um, because they needed to meet the obligations of withdrawals. But the thing is, their bonds uh, are paying less. So if they sell them at auction, uh, the bonds they currently own pay significantly less interest uh, than the bonds that, um, you know, if you were to buy a treasury bill now, it's, you know, the six month is paying over 5%. The ones they're holding are not paying anywhere near that much. So if they want to sell them, uh, they actually have to sell them at a discount. So this is what they did. Silicon Valley Bank, they sold $21 billion worth of treasuries, uh, but they were forced to sell them at a $1.8 billion loss um, because they're paying lower interest rates because the Fed has raised interest rates uh, so fast. And this is actually probably going to be a major concern for some other banks as well. You know, If it can hit Silicon Valley Bank, Maybe because the fact that a lot of their customers are venture capital companies, you know, uh, startups, they are a bit more, um, how should we say, unstable. They're getting hit, you know, they're, you know, with debt payments and things like that that have increased. Um, But this could even happen to many big names like JP Morgan, Bank of America, et cetera. 
if they get a lot of uh, withdrawals, they may be forced to sell treasuries that are paying uh, lower interest rates um, at a discount, at, at a loss. Yeah, I, I think like with, with this, the you know, the, the bigger guys, um, they they had their securities back a little bit more. You get a loan from them, you're, you're signing over some collateral to get the money. Um, a lot of the a lot of the money that SVB was putting out was tech money uh, that was debt debt tech money. It wasn't it wasn't actual equity, you know. So so people would go to SVB if you're if you're a startup tech or mid level tech, you need more cash. Every tech company always just consumes cash. I mean, these guys are cash cows. I know somebody that's doing one right now. They're going through a third round of funding, and you know they burned through ten million dollars already in the last eighteen months, and they've made like nothing. So it's like you, you, you've got to really think about how these guys operate and, and how they think in the tech world. We're, we're, you know, is this the pop bubble for the tech world? You know, we, we all thought it might have been the crash of Tesla. Right. But Tesla has a little bit more than just a technology company. You know, they have tangible sales. They have assets that they've moved. <laughs> but for SVB, the, these guys are basically giving debt loans without collateral without sealing it off and saying you know hey what do you guys have that we can hold in case you do go belly up and, and they didn't have it and now so there was lines at svb's locations in silicon valley on wednesday people pulling their money out they're literally lined up outside so the writing was on the wall and, and you know i think i, I want to say it's idiosyncratic i don't want to say it's systemic like lehman lehman was systemic there was a bunch of mortgage-backed problems. You know, the subprime market was completely disrupted. But really, you know, when you look at this company, this isn't a little bank. This is the second largest bank collapse in the history of the United States. Let's be clear. Lehman had $639 billion in assets. These guys got $211 billion. I mean, I think on paper it was 209 at the end of the day because they lost the 1.8. But, but really, ultimately, it's like, What's going to happen with how they're going to shake this all out? I mean, the FDIC came out and uh, they they said, you know, all insured depositors will have full access to their insured deposits no later than Monday morning, March 13, 2023. The FDIC will pay uninsured debitors, <clears throat> depositors and advanced dividends within the next week. So, so wait, they, what does that mean? Because FDIC insurance is only up to two hundred and fifty dollars. So, what does that mean? Uninsured two hundred fifty thousand dollars. But the thing is, is the yeah. FDIC has never denied a claim, no matter the amount. So they say it's only up to two hundred and fifty k, but they've always paid out the full amount to any depositor into a bank that's failed. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. So the, the FDIC. That's why everybody loves banking in America because something collapsed, you're going to get your money no matter what. So it's not like you're over in, you know, Zimbabwe hoping that you inflation doesn't, you know, bring a wheelbarrow for a for a pop, right? Or a soda. You know, it, it's it's a little interesting to really think about how it's all all coming together, but you know, you have the other things that are going on right now, you know, March 8th, Silvergate turns around and they're like, "Hey, we're going belly up, but we're going to do it slowly." Like, "No, you're not going to do it slowly. That's not how the market reacts to things. You announce that you're going to liquidate your assets and you're going to move away from it like that hit crypto hard crypto was slowly starting to creep back up and boom that that announcement comes out you know you see everything kind of drop you know bitcoin on that day i think it was at 23k and now we're at 19k let's see if it stabilizes goes down you know but um there's a lot of different things that are going on uh with this whole thing you know and is it contagion you know let's hope it's not contagion in the market like you know, you have you have First Republic Bank. They opened up today and they crashed. People were like, whoa, First Republic's down 50 percent. This bank's been around mm -hmm. since 1922. Wow. Right. They hold one hundred eighty one billion dollars in assets. And it's not like tech assets. These are like tangible properties. These guys like cross their T's, dot their I's. And that's what kind of threw me off. And I was like, hmm, let's see if First Republic can pull away. But but ultimately. I know that, you know, the government's going to pull everybody out of the mess. I mean, they did it in 08. They'll, they'll do it in 23 if it's need be. I mean, we all know that the financial writing on the wall is, you know, pretty much disastrous. When you when you give away $6 trillion, 
you know, you got to figure out where to get it from. So they're going to inflate their way out of it, but they're going to burn some companies on the way out. Right. SVP is one of those companies yeah. or SVB, you know. So let's see the 8,500 employees are, are the ones that, I, you know, I, I would be more concerned about than anybody. These guys are done overnight. And then you've got, you know, 29% of all of all of the deposits in Silicon Valley went to SVB. So do you think this company is actually going to fully shut down? Because um, what they were saying is that the the valuation of the company is changing so fast because they're trying to sell. They've been trying to sell themselves. They've been trying to sell the company and uh, they, they can't value it because it's been changing so fast with these withdrawals that it's proving very hard to actually sell or find a buyer for. Oh, well, that's the whole thing. Who wants to buy something that's in the red? Like not only in the red, but it's on, you know, it's burning. This is this is a ship that's on fire. And they're like, hey, come buy my ship. It's 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 on fire. Like, no, you know, no one no one's gonna do that. Even for for let's let's say you were doing 10% on the on the asset, right? So you're still looking at coming in with 20 billion dollars to buy these guys out. You know, who's gonna put 20 billion dollars on this fire? Somebody might, I highly doubt it, especially with the, the, like you said, with the treasury notes, you know, an interesting thing is like, uh, 2008, the two year treasury, uh, bond, uh, for, for our money is, uh, declined the most in one day. And the, the, if you go back in history, 2008 was the last time it declined this fast. So it's like, and, you know, you have Powell going, hey, let's raise rates a half a point two days ago, you know. And so so I think that might have been the the motivation. Right. They're like, well, if he's going to raise it again, a half a point, are we going to uh, are we going to have to sell this at even more of a loss? So they're like, I better get out of it now while we can. And you can see if you zoom in on that graph, Dom, um, you can see where the Treasury's just lost. uh lost their their value zoom right in on the most recent part of the graph with the mouse and uh that's zooming out <laughs> opposite direction there we go there we go yeah you can see how the treasuries you know they're going up but they just dropped significantly within one day um so they're at yeah close to five percent and or at, yeah, over five percent uh on they, the two year and yeah. it's dropped down to 4.6 they dropped so, half a point literally in a day that's that's a big deal on, on something like that and so it, it's interesting too when you look at you know svb this started in 1982 they're tech-based crypto-based you know uh the the main thing they're invested in are tech and life sciences right that's that's their bread and butter and and there's no community there there's nobody gonna call up and say hey let me buy some of your paper let me clean you up. Let me let me do what I can. No bank's gonna do that. It's it's the tech community. They're all they're running in a circle, shooting at each other, you know. And that's the problem with the the, the tech community and banking is that it's all it, it's all air money. It, there's no real tangible assets that back it. So in my mind, it's like, is this the beginning of the bubble? But then you have huge tech companies that really do create super value, like Amazon, Facebook. You know, Meta, like those, those guys are bringing in monster revenues. So, but I wonder at the same time, is it was this writing on the wall seen by Bezos and, and Zuckerberg when they started laying off people in the right, last? Because they have months? been laying off already in batches of like ten thousand at a time. <clears throat> right. Yeah, I think I think Amazon's laid off what seventy eight thousand people so far this year. Like that's, that's a huge amount of the workforce, but the job numbers come out this, this week and they're like, the job oh. numbers came out today. There were 311,000 for, uh, yeah. Added. Uh, yeah. And it was predicted. It was only going to be 225,000. So yeah, and I, February, we had a significant, about a hundred thousand or 90,000 more than was predicted. So the economy is still pretty hot. You know, and that might be the reason the market didn't crash today. Right. Yeah. yeah true. And, but this is also why they're going to raise rates even more. Which is uh, which is pretty worrying. So I think um, we should move on to talk about uh, Jerome Powell, what he said uh, to Congress this week. Um, and if you guys want to see that, then you're going to need to follow us on YouTube 
and on all the other social media, TikTok, Instagram, et cetera, whatever you're on. If you want to see our other videos this week, uh, we're going to be talking about Jerome Powell uh, raising rates and a few other exciting topics as well. Joe Biden raising your taxes potentially, and also how much Chris Rock got paid for his uh, two Netflix specials. But uh, all right, guys, so that's it for this one. Thanks very much for watching. Thanks for joining me, Mike. Thank you. Cool, and we'll see you in the next video.